What up, family? Listen, man, Darius Daniels here, and uh, uh, I'm excited about this. I just need a few minutes. I think we need to have a conversation about conversations. We need to have a conversation about conversations. This is what I've learned. I've learned if you're going to thrive, and I believe you want to, th there's a word that is actually the opposite of thriving. It's called languishing. You know what that means? Failure to thrive. If you're going to thrive, and I believe you want to, you're going to have to master the art, the skill of having tough conversations. What do you mean, Darius? I want you to check this out because I believe in something called integration. And I teach this a lot, and I want to just spend just a second making sure you're wrapping your head around it. When I say integration, this is what I mean. The idea that one part of your life doesn't affect another just isn't true. All your life is integrated. So how you are emotionally affects how you are relational. Let me ask you something. Have you ever felt like, oh man, I was, I was not as patient as I should have been or could have been with the people that I love? Or have you ever felt like, man, I was snappy with the people that I love. I was irritable with the people that I love. Or I took my bad day out on somebody who wasn't responsible for it. Or I'm, I'm in my head, I'm silent, I'm reflecting, I'm, I'm thinking. And so because I'm thinking in my head, I'm not engaging with the person that I'm with. So I believe in something called integration. And it's based on this. The whole idea that one area of your life doesn't affect another area of your life is just not true. Like how you are emotionally affects how you are relationally, and how you are relationally affects how you are emotionally. Have you ever been in a good mood and then you were with somebody and maybe y'all didn't see eye to eye, now I messed up your mood? So what was going on relationally affect you emotionally. Like when you see people that are down in the dumps and sometimes can't get out of bed or not their normal, like hyper jovial, excited self, what happens relationally can affect you emotionally, but it's also the other way around. What happens emotionally can affect you relationally, right? So if there, there can be something that's going on at work, there can be something that's going on at church, there can be something that's going on with you personally, and that affects like how you engage with people, how present you are with people. That, they used to say, I used to hear people talk about this a lot when I was growing up. They're like, yo, my body's here, but my mind's on the other side of town. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can be somewhere and not really be somewhere, because how you are emotionally affects how you are relationally. Have you ever known someone to, or have you ever felt like, man, I had a bad day and I took that out on people that had nothing to do with it? Because how you are emotionally affects how you are relationally. How you are relationally affects how you are emotionally. So this whole idea, man, that one part of my life doesn't affect another, just isn't true. So then, if I want to thrive in life, I can't ignore certain areas of my life, specifically, exclusively, primarily, or specifically and primarily, the relationship area of my life. Relationships aren't just about relationships. Relationships are about life, because there's no aspect of your life that's not impacted by relationships. Your resources are impacted by your relationships. Come on, your professional advancement is impacted by relationships. Your health can be impacted by your relationships. Everything is impacted by relationships. And so this means relationship management is life management. And this, this means if I'm going to thrive in the area of my relationships, one of the things I got to master is tips for tough conversations. And this is what I found when it comes to tough conversations. Many people fall into one or two extremes. What is it? It's like hyper aggressive is like they say any and everything <laughs> like their problem is oh my god I just said too much I said too much <laughs> I said too much so I said the wrong thing and I even said it the wrong way so you got hyper aggressive then the other side is passive aggressive they don't say enough they aren't forthright they aren't candid and so the truth comes out subliminally in jokes or in sly and slick comments. When there's passive aggressiveness, people have to use anger to tell the truth. Think about that. 
So most people kind of fall into two categories. And so that makes tough conversations hard. And I want to tell you something. Tough conversations. Tough conversations. Don't destroy relationships if they're had the right way. I'm going to say that again. Tough conversations don't destroy relationships if they have the right way. So many times people are like, I don't want to have the conversation and I don't know what it's going to do to the relationship. And I'm not saying that tough conversations won't be challenging in certain relationships. There are times where there are people who um, are just not emotionally intelligent enough to handle tough conversations no matter what approach that you take. But I do believe that there are some relationships, if they matter to you, they're worth the risk. Now, there might be some relationships where you're like, you know what, it's just this, it's not even worth it. But I believe there are some relationships for you that are worth the risk. And if you want to Say, hey, I don't want to be, pa- I don't want to be hyper aggressive, but I don't want to be passive aggressive. I want to be as effective as possible. Meaning, that if this doesn't go well, it's not because I didn't deliver it well. You can't control whether or not it goes well. I want, I want you to release yourself from that expectation. You can't because there are so many factors beyond you that determine how a person handles a conversation like that. But, 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 but. You want to do everything that you can to make sure you don't get in the way of it being received well. So you don't want to be hyper aggressive. You don't want to be passive aggressive. You want to be assertive. You want to get right in the middle there. And so what I want to give is some, some tips for tough conversations. These are kind of outlined by John Townsend. And he walks us through some steps that I think are just some best practices for tough conversations. I'm going to share these steps with you and, um, and hopefully there are steps we can implement either right now with a tough conversation that you need to have or in the future when you need to have one you've got these practices in your tool belt and you can reach for them and use them. All right. So here are some tips for tough conversations. Here's the first thing you want to convey. Now You don't necessarily have to use this language. You don't necessarily have to quote these words, but this is the heart of what you want to convey when you're having a tough conversation. Number one, I love you and I'm on your side. I love you and I'm on your side. You don't have to say I love you and I'm on your side, but you want to communicate that I love you, that I am interested in your well-being. I am on your side. I am for you. I want the best for you. I'm not using you. I'm not exploiting you. I value you. I appreciate you. I honor your commitment and your contribution to my life. And I'm on your side. You want to find a way to communicate that. Okay. However, watch this. However, here's the second thing. (laughs) here is how your behavior is impacting me. So you want to identify the behavior and you want to articulate the impact that is having on you. I love you and I'm on your side, but here's a behavior I've noticed and this is how it's impacting me. Got me? Now, What you want to do here is articulate behavior and how it's impacting you without making judgment on the person who's engaging in the behavior. So you're saying, hey, these are things that have happened or are happening, and this is the way that it's impacting me. So you're not even judging the behavior in and of itself. You're identifying it and you're articulating how it impacts you. Now, this is a completely different conversation, but their response to how something impacts you really should be a revelation to you of whether or not this relationship is good for you. 
Because if something is negatively impacting you and the person you're in a relationship with, whether platonic, romantic, whatever, doesn't care, that says something. I'm not saying that means that you have to abandon a relationship, but I am saying that is something that you shouldn't ignore. I'm not saying that means <laughs> blow everything up, but I am saying pay attention. This is the behavior, and this is the way it's impacting me. Got me? Okay. Here's the third thing. I can't make you change this behavior, but I have to change some things if you don't. I can't make you change this behavior, but I have to change some things if you don't. I can't make you stop yelling at me, but I can't continue to sit while you yell at me because I just told you how that impacts me. Got me? Okay, so what is this? This is you articulating in some sense that you're going to have to set a boundary. Got me? Okay, and then last but not least, you articulate what that boundary is. If this doesn't stop, this is exactly what I will have to do. It's one thing to say, I'm going to have to change some things. It's another thing to clearly articulate, these are the things I'm going to have to change. Because this is what boundary conversations are all about. It's not about what, an, what, what the other person does. It's about what you do. You can't control what the other person does. You're not responsible for what the other person does, but you are responsible for you. And we all at some point or another are gonna have to have some tough talks. And I want you to keep these tips in mind because tough, because tough talks are often the path and the route to great relationships and great peace can't thrive in life if you aren't thriving in relationships, and that requires some tough talk.